Honorable uh, First Vice President, Dr. Kupe, Second Vice President, um, Honorable Engineer Elias Mzuri, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, welc welcome to this uh, press conference um, after a long time. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming to this press conference at short notice. This press conference um, is about the announcement of our shadow cabinet. In line with international best practice and taking into account the type of governmental and parliamentary system that we have in Zimbabwe, the MDCT, after a lot of consultation, has come up with a shadow cabinet. The purpose of this shadow cabinet is to provide a critical eye to the key activities of government. It is also to provide oversight on the implementation or faithful implementation of government's stated policies. And most importantly, the purpose of the shadow cabinet is to come up with alternative policies that are in the best interest of Zimbabwe. In developing these policies that will be articulated in parliament and other appropriate fora, the shadow cabinet ministers will be we will interact with civil society, um, labor, uh, business, uh, churches, and other stakeholders. The main important thing is to develop policies that are in the best interest of Zimbabwe. You will find that the, the by and large, the ministries that we have created mirror the ministries that are in the current government. However, in some instances, we have had to disentangle uh, the ministries. This is in order to facilitate easy, focused oversight uh, on the relevant ministries, um, a focused uh, shadowing of the relevant ministries, and in some instances, it is meant to separate politics and economics. Zimbabwe has been under international isolation for almost, for more than two decades now. And uh, uh, most of this isolation has been, has, has been political. Um, uh, uh, and it, was, it has been for political reasons, although it has had uh, uh, economic consequences. Therefore, there is need to focus on the international re-engagement of Zimbabwe, the political re-engagement of Zimbabwe with the international community, including joining the Commonwealth. Um, so there will be a minister that will focus on foreign affairs. Uh, a lot is happening in the international community right now, politically and so on. For example, we know what is happening in the Afghanistan. We, all, we also know what is happening uh, across the borders and so on. So there is a need to focus on foreign affairs with the intention of facilitating the reintegration of the Zimbabwean community with the international community at a political level. Also because of the international isolation, Zimbabwe's business has been left behind. So there is a need for Zimbabwe to focus on international trade. And international trade here uh, will focus on assisting Zimbabwean business to be competitive at the world stage and to be streetwise at the world stage. So to facilitate this uh, uh, trade, uh, and trade ability, we have separated the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, with the Ministry of International, with the Ministry of International Trade. International Trade is going to focus on international commerce, on how to do business in a competitive manner. Remember, the aim of the MDC is to make Zimbabwe a world-class economy. For decades, our, me, our women have suffered marginalization. Uh, politically, economically, and socially. Um, and um, there is need uh, to end this marginalization. There is a core relationship that is there, according to some scholars, between uh, removing the marginalization of women and direct social, political, and economic development. 
And looking at other countries like Rwanda, there seems to be a core relationship between women's advancement and even an end to corruption or reduction in corruption and the incidences of, of state capture. Um, most countries have um, uh, developed on the basis of uh, small and medium enterprises. Um, and these countries include the United States of America. It is a mistake to genderize small and medium enterprises. At present, the current ministry, uh, relevant ministry, is called the Minister of Women, then Small and Medium Enterprises. What this seems to imply is that small and medium enterprises are confined to women. That is a mistake. Uh, small to medium enterprises must be developed for everybody, the women, the youth, and the other groups. It can form the backbone of the economic survival or revival of Zimbabwe. The women's issues, the serious, other serious women's issues, the involvement in politics, the involvement in the economy, the involvement in big business, women must be involved in biz, big business as well, is what we are trying to emphasize on. So you will see a disentanglement uh, in terms of oversight uh, uh, between the Ministry of Women's Affairs and the Ministry of SMEs. Climate change has become a very important topic in the world today, the environment and climate change. We need to focus on that to make sure that we have a green society, a green economy, and so on. Then we have the issue of hospitality and tourism, which is going to be a growing industry in Zimbabwe, and it is going to be a key industry leading to the economic revival of Zimbabwe. You will find, ladies and gentlemen, that we have disentangled that for purposes of oversight. Now, I've said before that oversight involves uh, the, the development of alternative policy. Now, with the time that is left uh, uh, between now and the elections and so on, and the uh, uh, importance of this uh, uh, process, we want to speed up the development of alternative policies. That's why we have appointed ministers to focus on a specific areas. The MDC is emphasizing efficiency. It is also emphasizing the disentanglement of politics and economics. We have looked at the need always in our dealings to ensure that we put the competency of the individual at the forefront. Uh, whether this individual is a woman or a man or comes from Manikaland or Mashonaland, it doesn't matter. So we looked at the competencies of the various ministers. We also looked at such issues as gender and the need to advance women. And as I, adv uh, as I read the names to you, I should be the first to confess that we are still not happy about the level of women representation uh, uh, even in this in this shadow cabinet and we are going to be improving on that we also looked at the issues of youth uh, the need to make sure that the youth are made leaders of today and not leaders of tomorrow we also looked of course at the issues of uh, the need for uh, geographical representation in terms of the uh, of the constitution of Zimbabwe. Now, the, cab the shadow cabinet will involve, of course, a shadow president, a shadow, a shadow vice president to mirror the highest part of the executive. So it is the three of us, uh, uh, myself, and, uh, Vice President Kupe, Vice President Muzuri. So they, we form part of the cabinet. Then the ministers are as follows, the shadow ministers are as follows, Defense and War Veterans Affairs, Senator Morgan Komich, Energy and Power Development, uh, Senator Chief Njovu, he is a businessman, um, uh, he was based in South Africa but is now based in Zimbabwe, Environment and Climatic Change, 
Honorable Winfreda Yvonne Musarurwa, tourism and hospitality industry, we have disentangled this because of the, its importance. Uh, we have Honorable Memory Mbondia, finance and economic development, veteran uh, uh, politician, veteran economist, uh, Dr. Tapua Mashakada, foreign affairs, uh, one of our young people, Honorable Brian Dube. As I said, we disentangled foreign affairs with international trade. Uh, international trade, here we have um, uh, appointed an international trade lawyer, and his name is Honorable Ruben Chikudo of Goromon South. Health and, and, and uh, Child Care, Honorable Dr. Ruth Labode. Higher Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology, Dr. Samuel Banda is a, is, is one of our youngsters, uh, member of Parliament for Mount Pleasant. Uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage, this is a veteran again, uh, Senator Pini Odenga from Marsh East. Industry and Commerce, um, Honorable David Tekeshe uh, from Manikaland, he is a businessman in Manikaland and Mashonaland. Information Communication Technology, uh, Postal and Career Services, one of our uh, up and coming young men, young politicians, Senator Kalipani Pugen. Uh, uh, the Minister of um, Information, Publicity and Broadcasting uh, Services, again a young woman uh, from Matebelen South, Honorable Sipo Mokone. A Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, uh, one of our up and coming lawyers, Honorable Anelen Debele from Blawayo. Minister of Public Service, Labor and Social Warfare, a veteran trade unionist, and our member, uh, our Secretary General, uh, uh, Honorable Paulina Mpariwa. She held this uh, position in the inclusive government as well. Uh, Minister of uh, Minister of Agriculture, um, uh, Fisheries and Rural Resettlement. On this ministry, we have had to disentangle. It is a very, very long ministry. And as you may know, the President Munangagwa has actually put more than two deputy ministers on this ministry. Uh, so we have had to disentangle it. And we are disentangling because the cabinet, the national cabinet ministers that we have, have the benefit of having deputy ministers they have the benefit of uh, being helped by the state bureaucracy and they have the benefit of being helped by the directors and permanent secretaries which our shadow ministers don't have that's why we have had to disentangle the ministries so uh, the main ministry lands agriculture fisheries and rural resettlement uh, honorable joyce makonya um, again a veteran um, uh, mp from manikaland local government and public works. Um, this is um, a very, very enterprising man. He's a businessman. He is um, uh, a very, very versatile character. He was um, the deputy mayor for Bulawayo, and you know he was in Zifa, he is in Zifa, and so on. Honorable gift banda. Um, national housing and social amenities one of our veteran politicians um, she worked for a very long long time in civil society and currently she is our secretary for women's affairs honorable senator dorothy Ndiovu. primary and secondary education again this is a veteran former deputy um, speaker in the in the national assembly honorable nomalanga kumalo Youth, sport, arts and culture, uh, sorry, and, and recreation. Um, a young man who is up and coming, uh, MP for Glenview South, Honorable Vincent Changrai. Uh, Women's Affairs, 
community development. Again, this is a veteran uh, member of the MDC, uh, Honorable Sibusisiwe Buddha Masara in the National Assembly. We want to push the issue of the women uh, affairs starting from the National Assembly, and there was going to be a, there is going to be a lot of activity there. Uh, we have disentangled the Minister of Women's Affairs and Community Development and the Ministry of Small and uh, uh, Medium Enterprises for the reason that I have given. So the Minister of Small, Medium and Medium Enterprises is uh, Honorable Lindiwe Maposa, uh, a young woman from Matebeleland South. Transport and Infrastructure Development uh, he is our Deputy Secretary General, he's a medical doctor by profession, uh, Senator Tichiranani Mavetera. A Minister of Mines and Mining Development, um, this is a young man, he's a lawyer by profession, but he is based in a mining area and has got knowledge uh, in mining. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, mining is one of the most regulated uh, and legislated industries. It is going to be the backbone of Zimbabwe's economic revival, Honorable Chinyanga, Advocate Chinyanganya. A ma uh, Minister of State Security, we realize that uh, this ministry, um, in the, under the current setup, uh, the government setup, is housed in the office of the president and cabinet. Um, we don't think that is a good idea, and we want it to stand alone as a ministry. Uh, so Minister of State Security is a young man, uh, former councillor in Harare, now MP um, in Harare, Honorable Peter Moyo. We have yet to disentangle the Ministry of Agriculture and from water resources. And we have somebody to oversee water resources. If you cast your mind back, this is a ministry that uh, former Vice President Honorable Mjuru once, Mjuru once held. And uh, that ministry goes to one of our young uh, and upcoming uh, uh, women politicians and, and MPs, Honorable Brightness Mangora. Now, we have given you the shadow cabinet but as you know there are ministers of state for provincial affairs the mdc is very very serious with uh, the as the issue of devolution we think that devolution is an, an answer to uneven development and we have developed we have deployed um uh, 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 some men and women of competency uh, to those uh, provinces to deal with the provincial affairs as well as devolution affairs. Arare Metropolitan Province, uh, this is a veteran uh, politician um, and a founder member of the MDC, uh, also involved in sport, Senator Morgan Femai. Uh, Mashona and West, this man is the actual member of parliament. Had it not been for the inefficiency of Zek, uh, Mr. Gift uh, Machona Konjana, he is going to be the shadow minister for Marsh uh, West, uh, shadowing uh, Miss Minister Mary Mliswa. Machona Land East, again, she's a veteran um, uh, member of the party and worked very hard in the Women's Assembly. Um, she's a senator. Uh, for Mashona and the East Province, M M Honorable Jane Chifamba. Mashona and Central, one of our founding members, veteran trade unionist, um, and uh, um, as a veteran parliamentarian, uh, Honorable Gift Chimanikire, who is also our national organizing secretary. Mashingo, um, this man is uh, a former member of parliament, um, and he is a veteran trade unionist as well, uh, Honorable Festus Dumbo. 
uh, Matebele and South. Um, one of our most educated people is a former soldier, uh, former freedom fighter under Zipra. Uh, his name is Honorable Ekem Moyo. He is going to be our member of. Uh, um, sorry, he is going to be our uh, Minister of State for Matebele and South. Matebele and North, um, a veteran again in the Women's Assembly as well as a current uh, member of parliament uh, uh, for under proportional representation. Honorable Loazi Sibanda, Bulawayo, uh, she again is a um, veteran uh, and uh, she is uh, a veteran. Uh, uh, she, she is by training, in the original training a nurse she has uh, advanced herself and uh, old advanced degrees. Uh, Honorable Nom Vlamguni, Midlands, one of our most uh, hardworking women and veteran politicians, Honorable Teti Banda, Senator for Midlands. Manika and the province, uh, this man was um, Minister of Home Affairs under the inclusive government. A veteran nationalist um, and uh, one of our most um, loyal uh, cadres, Honorable Major Giles Musekwa. Now, as I have said, the ministers of state don't sit in cabinet, but we have deployed uh, our ministers in various provinces to shadow the ministers. Uh, of state for provincial and devolution affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the appointment of ministers is an iterative process. Uh, it is a process that is done after thorough consultation um, and so on. This is what we offer uh, to Zimbabwe. These ministers, have the, we, we have had a meeting today um, after they accepted their appointments, we have had a meeting with them today, uh, giving them our expectations. Um, and the main expectation is that they must develop policies for the best interests of Zimbabwean people. And uh, in a few days' time, we are going to organize a retreat for the Shadow Cabinet. Uh, we are expecting these ministers to be traveling all over the country um, and uh, supervising activities in their various um, areas of work. They are men and women, uh, both young, old, and middle-aged that we do have confidence in. And we commend these people, these ministers, to the people of Zimbabwe. I want to thank you. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat.